Well, good evening, everybody. This is Mark Edelman, speech language pathologist, and welcome. Welcome to Facebook Live. Welcome to our meeting tonight. Hey, Joe. Joe, I was just thinking about you. Uh, gosh, I was thinking about you for a long time tonight as I was preparing my uh, uh, thoughts for tonight's presentation. And there's Virginia Bruce. And boy, I'm glad to see everybody. And Danielle, there you are. And there's Diana. Wow. And there's Juanetta. Wow. All the, all the great people. And there's Michelle. Oh my goodness, there's Michelle. And it's good to see Michelle. There's a lot Michelle can share with us also. And uh, there's Candace. And good evening. I, I first of all want to applaud you. I want to applaud each and every one of you this evening because, you know, there are a lot of people who are, you know, stuck to their TVs and they want to know, you know, what's going to happen with the elections and all that other kind of stuff. And um, you're going to be able to find out all about the elections in an hour or an hour and a half or two hours. So I just want to, hey, Connie and and Joe again, I just want to applaud you for being on the call. Hey, Helen, I want to applaud you for being on the call and putting this, putting this, the teaching of talking, putting this, helping loved ones talk, putting this as your priority for right now. This is my priority for right now. Nothing else matters to me right now, only you. And so I'm giving you every bit of my attention. Hey, Rhonda and Tony, good to see you. So it's great to see everybody. And, and, and I just want to again applaud you for being here and not glued to the TV set. Oh my goodness. So... We're going to have a wonderful uh, uh, class tonight, and I think it's going to be very, very, very helpful for everybody. And what I want to do is I want to present some information to you because I know that this group consists of caregivers or care partners, and I know that this group consists of people with aphasia. And... I know that this group consists of speech pathologists. So we're all in the same boat. We're all interested in helping people with aphasia speak better. And I've been really giving this class tonight a lot of thought just about all day. So let's get to it, okay? So... The title of this presentation tonight is How to Assure Results with Speech Therapy. You heard me. How to, how to assure results. Now, how are we going to make sure that we're going to get results? That's what all of us want. You know, we, we, we could be on a call and we could be doing all kinds of things. But the bottom line that I know what you want is you want results. I know Michelle wants results. I know Joe wants results. I know Diana wants results, and I know that Virginia wants results. But you know something? There are certain things that you got to do to get results. <laughs> you know, it's just not a free ride, okay? There are just certain things that we got to do if we want to get results. And that's what we're going to uh, handle tonight. And so first, I want to just kind of review a little research with you, because research basically answers a lot of questions. All right. So one of the first questions is, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about aphasia. Okay, so what I just want to do real quick is that aphasia is caused usually by a cerebral vascular stroke of some kind. 
Now, not in all cases. In other cases, it may be botched surgery or any number of other things. But one of the things is that if you have a stroke, about 38% uh, of people who have a stroke have aphasia. So it's about 4 out of 10 people who have a stroke have aphasia. And we all know what aphasia is. Aphasia is a diminished ability to use language. Hi, Miranda. The diminished ability to express oneself, or that's expressing oneself in speech or in writing, or diminished ability to express oneself uh, in, or excuse me, in comprehending what is said. So aphasia also affects your ability to understand what people are saying to you or being able to read and get understanding. And so we know that aphasia will affect your ability to speak, to write, to comprehend what other people are saying, and to comprehend what you're reading. Now, so what we're finding, and I went over the literature very intensely this week, and here's some of the things you really got to know, okay? The first thing is that there's something called spontaneous recovery, okay? And spontaneous recovery is having a stroke, maybe losing your ability to speak. And let's say after a few weeks, some of the speech starts coming back uh, and that a condition improves on its own. Now that's called spontaneous recovery. That means some people recover, kind of like a cold, and it happens automatically and spontaneously. Now what the research says, hey Tammy, what the research says, hey Isabel, the research says that within the first six months, that's the period of time when you're going to get the most spontaneous recovery. Now remember the definition of spontaneous recovery. Hey Tammy, spontaneous recovery is getting better automatically. It's like getting better without having to do a whole heck of a lot. That's spontaneous recovery. And what they're saying and what the literature says, the medical literature says, that that spontaneous recur, uh, recovery occurs most often during the first six months. If you don't even do anything about it, most of the recovery will occur then. But you and I both know, and everybody else knows, that it really doesn't matter how long you've been recovering from aphasia, that as long as there's good stimulation and good therapy, that at any particular point after a person has a stroke, they can still improve and improve well. All right? So the spontaneous recovery is automatic recovery. And most of that occurs during the first six months to a year. All right? Now, the most... Uh, uh, improvement of speech occurs when you have good stimulation and it can occur uh, a year after, two years after, three years after, 10 years after, 15 years after. And I know that there are a number of people who've been on our call who've been recovering for over 10 years. And you know, some people think that, gosh, you know, they they had their stroke 10 years ago and they're not going to really get any better. So they, they don't seek out additional help. But you know something? If you seek out additional help, no matter where you are in the continuum, and that help gets you talking and talking more and talking with more complex utterances, okay, you can still get better. So it doesn't matter 
It doesn't matter if your stroke, hey, Marcy, it doesn't matter if your stroke is a month or six months or a year or two years or four years or five years, doesn't matter. Just so long as you have good stimulation, just so long as you have a good therapist, just so long as you have a care partner who learns how to stimulate your speech and language. Okay, so now I'm going to throw a figure out at you. Hey, Trina, how can I help my cousin understand me? She has lost the ability to speak. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of get to that, okay? Uh, so I'm glad you're on the call, Trina. But I'm going to throw a figure at everybody. And, um, you know, I, I, as I told you, I've spent a lot of time researching this week. And you know something? I, I want to I want to tell you some results of a couple of studies, okay? And what the first results is is that they took two groups and they gave them intensive therapy, okay? In one study, they had people receiving therapy eight hours a week. Now, now put that in your, put that in your head now. They had one group that was getting speech and language stimulation eight hours a week. All right. So put that in there. Then they had another group and they gave that group therapy two hours a week. All right? So most of you have been through speech therapy. Many of you know what speech therapy is. So just imagine if you got eight hours of speech and language stimulation per week, eight hours. And Joe, when I worked with you in Houston, I remember you came to Houston five days a week some months. You came five days a week and we worked for an hour every time you came. And then you worked for an hour in the car coming to Houston. And so you were working, man, you were working like 10 hours a week, minimum. You were working 10 hours a week on your speech. And so, so here's the study now, and they repeated it in a number of different studies. So imagine this. I'm going to set it up one more time for you. They had one group, 11 weeks. They gave them therapy. Eight hours a week for 11 weeks. Then they had the other group, 23 weeks. So that's about a little over five months. And they gave that group two hours of speech therapy a week. And then they looked at the results. And what they found out was that those who received eight hours worth of therapy every week, eight hours worth, when they compared them to the ones who were getting two hours a week, they found that those who were getting two hours a week hardly made any progress at all. Hardly any progress at all. Hey, Deborah. Minimal progress twice a week, two hours a week. And they compared that to those who were getting speech and language stimulation eight hours a week. Eight hours. Now, put that in your head. Eight hours. Put it in there. Now, you know, when you look at eight hours, you might think, holy camoly, eight hours? I could never do eight hours. All right, but think about it for a minute. We know there's seven days in a week. Seven days in a week. Well, that would just be like about an hour and a quarter or so. Uh, uh, an hour's worth or a 
hour and 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, a little over an hour's worth of speech and language stimulation every day. That's what that equals to. It's not very much. I mean, think about eating. You eat three meals a day, about an hour and a half a day. You spend an hour and a half every day just eating. <laughs> so really, you know, an hour and a half a day really isn't that much. All right? So one of the things I'm going to throw out there, and I'm going to throw this out to, and I'm going to challenge everybody. Yeah, and here's somebody who says, I go to speech therapy once a week. Well, fine, once a week. What's that going to do for you? Okay, that may be 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. And, you know, if you have a mild problem, once or twice a week is okay if you have a mild problem. But the literature shows us study after study after study, when they looked at people who were getting speech and language therapy or speech and language stimulation, the minimum of eight hours a day, and they compared them to traditional therapy, which is half an hour or an hour, once or twice a week, that's a big difference. So here's my challenge. Here is my challenge to every one of you, okay? And, and the challenge is to put in your head that you're going to be working on your speech you know, not once a day for 20 minutes or not once a day for a half an hour, but at least an hour to an hour and a half of cumulative, cumulative speech and language stimulation. And here's Miranda says, it does work. I'm getting my confidence back. Of course it works. But most people, guess what? Most people are not willing to put in the time, not willing to put in the time, or they don't have anybody who's committed to helping them that much, an hour a day, an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes a day. Because when you're looking at a profound problem like aphasia, you got to remember too that People who have aphasia, they're forgetting a lot of stuff every day. So that's why I developed the teaching of talking, so that caregivers could be stimulating their speech all day long. Now, you know, you don't, if you're going to do speech and language stimulation with somebody, you don't have to sit down at a desk or a cubicle. You don't have to use flashcards. You don't have to take out an iPad because that's not really speech therapy. That's cognitive therapy. It's not speech therapy. Speech therapy is conversing, is talking. So you've got to talk with somebody and know how to talk with them to stimulate their speech. So, you know, before, before the class, I started thinking of how much time I speak with Malka. <laughs> Malka is my wife, as many of you know. So I started writing down all the things that Malka and I talked about today. And we talked, gosh, we talked about a ton of things. I made a list of it. You know, we, we made uh, a list of what we were going to do uh, tonight after class. We, we made a list of what we wanted to do Friday, who we wanted to see. My son's coming into town, where we're going to take him, where we're going to eat, what, where we're going to go. Then we talked about she wanted to go to Walmart, and she asked me what I wanted and what I needed there. And then all throughout the day, she asked me what I wanted for breakfast this morning, what I wanted for lunch, what I wanted for supper. She, we, then we had to put together something for the motor home. And so there was, Malka and I talked at least two hours today. And you know something? You can learn how to stimulate speech and language within the conversation, not sitting down with flashcards or any of that kind of stuff. 
you can talk about what you'd normally talk about with your spouse, okay? You talk about what you normally speak about with your spouse, but there's a certain way that you need to talk with them. You have to know how many words they can say. You want to know how many words that you can stimulate at one time without them messing up. And it might be one word. It might be two. It might be three. It may be four. It may be more than that, okay? And yes, there are people who don't have memory problems, but most normal people do. All of us do. You know, there's been tons of research done about, you know, People who were told something, even normal people, and, and, and the good percent of them, you know, 24 hours later, couldn't remember the specifics. So it's not just about aphasia, it's about all of us. Okay, so here's the thing. Intensive speech and language stimulation will help you improve speech and language much better than the traditional once a week or twice a week or 30 minutes or 45 or any of that stuff, okay? And what's great is that you can stimulate it at home, speech and language, and you can stimulate speech and language that's significant to whatever the situation is. Like Malka and I put up a, a sunshade today outside and we had to figure out how to do it. And I had an argument with her. She, she thought it had to be done one way. I thought it had to be done another way. Guess who won? <laughs> you know, I, I had to tell her, you were right, honey. Okay, but, you know, the, all of these interactions that we have with people are wonderful opportunities to stimulate speech and language. So, again, I'm, I, I, if, I could, if, if I could send out some vibrations to each and every person on this call, I would say an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half of speech stimulation every day. You got to do it. You just got to do it. Okay. The research, that's what the research is saying, and I believe that research, okay? Now, so here's the next thing. You know, one of the most famous golfers in the world Hi, Leah, was Tiger Woods, all right? Um, you know, Tiger didn't always behave himself, but Tiger was serious about being and becoming the best golfer in the world. That's what his dream was, to be the best golfer in the world. Now, so... I want to tell you a little bit about what Tiger Woods would do in a typical day and in a typical week in order to become the world's best golfer. Now, he's had like three or four back surgeries since then, so he didn't quite have the body like he used to. But I want to just share with you some of his routine that he engaged in. The first thing he would do when he'd wake up in the morning is he would run four miles. <laughs> he'd run four miles. All right? Then he'd come back, and when he'd come back, he'd go to the gym, and he would do weights. <laughs> you know, he was one serious guy, okay? Then, after he'd do his weights, he'd go to the driving range and he would hit golf balls for two to three hours.
two to three hours. You got that? <laughs> two to three hours. And you know what he'd do after that? He'd go out and play 18 holes of golf. Now remember, here's a serious guy. He wants to be the best golfer in the world, and he loves playing golf. He loves the competition. And you know, when I was reading this about, about Tiger, that you got to love it, you got to love your speech therapy. You got to love the speech and language stimulation. And you know something? If your loved one doesn't love it, then you got to find somebody else who could maybe do some stimulation with him that he would love to do. Because you got to love it. You got to love it. So here's what he did. He'd get up and he'd run four miles. Then he'd go to the gym. Then he'd hit golf balls for two to three hours. And then he'd play 18 rolls, uh, holes of, uh, of golf. Then he'd, in the afternoon, he'd go back out and he'd run four miles. And then in the evening, he'd play basketball or tennis. He didn't have any time to do anything else but become an excellent golfer. That was his purpose, to be an excellent golfer. All right. Now, I want to talk about one or two people, and then we're going to open up the calls, okay? Tom Brady, famous quarterback, 40 years old. 99% of the football players out there never make it to 40. In fact, they only get to play for about 10 years. Hey, Charade. And... uh so, so this is a, so Tom Brady, I want to tell you a little bit about Tom Brady. This is what he eats every day. No sugar, no white flour, no olive oil, no salt, no tomatoes, <laughs> no peppers, no mushrooms. No eggplant, and listen to this one, no caffeine, no caffeine, and no dairy. <laughs> and probably all of you are saying, oh my goodness, but here's like one of the best quarterbacks who ever lived, and still playing football and being a quarterback when he was 40. It's because he did the things that he had to do in order to succeed and in order to be great at what he does. So what does he eat? <laughs> so you might say, well, if you told me all those things that he doesn't eat and all of those things that he doesn't drink, well, what does he eat and what does he drink? Well, here's the answer. What he drinks is 25 glasses of water every day. Now, I'm not saying you do that, but that's what Tom Brady does. 25 glasses of water every day. Man, he must not be very far from a bathroom wherever he is. He works out with these elastic bands, these elastic bands, and does stretches with them. And he eats vegetables and lean meat. He eats vegetables. Now get this, vegetables, lean meat, and bukus of water. Okay. I got one more person to share with you, and then and then we're going to do some speech therapy, or we'll answer any of your questions, because I, I want this to be an enlightening meeting, 
because as I prepared for this uh, lesson tonight, I was very enlightened as I pursued the research and as I studied about people who became the best at what they do. There was a guy by the name of Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky was probably the world's finest hockey player. The world's greatest. And there are a couple of things Wayne Gretzky said in the book that he wrote. He said, if you follow these certain things every day, that you can become a superstar. And I equate this also to being a superstar in the ability to speak, okay? Hey, Bill, how you doing? So, one of the things that he, he says is you got to work hard every day and never complain. Never complain. You don't complain. You just do it. You just do whatever it is you got to do, and you don't complain. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. That's number one that Wayne Gretzky said, to be successful at what you're going to do. And this applies to speech therapy and improving your speech and language. The second thing is you got to love to do it. You got to love to practice speaking. You have to love doing it. It's not a task. It's not homework. It's not something you have to do because if it's that, guess what? You're not going to succeed at all. Okay? Being successful at improving your speaking takes a dedication because you love doing it. And you love doing it with whomever it is you're doing it with. Okay? And that's why I train caregivers what to do because I can show you what to do that will make it easy. That will make it easy for the person you're working with. And you know something? If you make it easy and you have fun, and you talk about cool stuff like beer or food or anything that that person likes to talk about, and you're having fun, then man, those th that really, really, really helps. Okay, now, the next thing that Mr. Gretzky told us is... You try new things. And if you see a shot, take it. Many of us, we get caught up in doing the same old, same old. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's something that, that happens with people. We get into doing the same old, same old. So what Gretzky says, you try new stuff. Try new stuff and see if you can love some new stuff, some new ways of doing things. Because he says you never know until you try it. And he's always looking for fun in what he's doing. And the other thing that Gretzky says is practice, 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 practice. Practice, 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 practice. And then more practice. That's what it takes. The reason why a lot of people with aphasia don't really get better is because they don't get enough therapy. And we talked about that in the beginning of today's class. They're not getting enough stimulation either at the speech therapist or the speech therapist isn't teaching the caregiver what to do. And many of you know that I believe from the very, very bottom of my heart 
that if you're going to get speech therapy and the speech therapist is not teaching you what to do with your loved one at home, then you're behind the eight ball. I remember Joe when he used to come to Houston and we, we, we taught the person who brought him exactly what to do and they practiced all the way to Houston and back home again, which was an hour each way. So he was getting an hour of therapy and an hour in the car going and an hour in the car coming going back home. So the other thing is, is that the worst thing for anybody who's undergoing speech therapy is to pr procrastinate about it. If you procrastinate doing or helping your loved one speak or taking the time to help him speak. If you procrastinate about it, guess what? It's going to hurt you later. It's going to hurt him later or her later. Okay? Procrastination, it's painful. Because when you procrastinate, you don't get the results. You just don't get it because you avoid. And you don't want to avoid. You want to practice, 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 learn, screw up, make mistakes, practice some more, practice, 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 and have a good time. So just take that first step. Okay, so that's my soapbox for tonight. Now I'm going to speak with some of you. And I, I, I hope that you've, I hope you've enjoyed some of that information. And I hope, and I'm seeing a lot of people who are giving me thumbs up and they're giving me big hearts. And Brian says, can you do one hour a day in parts or does it have to be one hour all at once? It's all in parts. You don't want to do it all at once. Who wants to put an hour aside every day? I don't, I don't know if I have an hour to put aside, okay? Every time you speak to a person who's got aphasia, you have an opportunity to speak, to stimulate their speech. Okay? So it's, it doesn't mean sitting down with somebody for an hour and, and working with them like the traditional speech therapy model, which I don't think works all the time. It's helpful, but I think what works even more is stimulating a person to speak when they need it, when they need the words, and they need certain words every day in certain contexts. Hey, Bill, you used to do teletherapy with my mom, Jessica, says Brian. Yeah. Okay, so remember that speech and language stimulation should be done naturally. It's a natural thing not something that you have to sit down and and get the stuff out, get the notebooks out or the handout sheets or the flash. That's not teaching talking. That's, that's painful. <laughs> okay. All right. So now I'm going to invite some people onto the call. And we're going to uh, answer your questions. Um, and we'll kind of leave it an open forum so that you will get the most, the very most out of this call. So anyone who has a question or anyone who has a comment, I want you to... Uh, Click, make sure that your phone is in horizontal. Make sure that your microphone is on. Make sure that your camera is on. And make a request for me to speak with you. Please do that. It's interesting. I'm glad you think it's interesting, Anne, because... Remember that what I developed is something called the teaching of talking. Talking takes two people, doesn't it? You sit down, one from each other, and you start talking. 
You go into the kitchen, you sit down at the kitchen table, you get a cold drink or a cup of coffee, and you sit down from one another and you talk. And I developed a way to talk with people that is therapeutic, that is a form of therapy that is based on sound speech therapy principles. All right? So I'm going to, uh, here's a question for Brian. How do you come up with new ideas for talking with your loved one each day? I worry about running out of things to talk about. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, first of all, you can't be boring, okay? Now, if you're a boring person, then you run out of stuff to talk about, all right? Now, so what you got to do is you got to do things every day. Let's see if we can get Ed onto the call. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. <laughs> well, I just saw that you were um, um, frozen. And uh, so I was just trying to get it up. Uh, come back up here, and there you are. Okay, okay good. good. Yes. How are you How doing? Are you doing? I'm doing very well. I have uh, really enjoyed your uh, motivation, your uh, your talk, motivation. To me, that's, of course, that's my, my, my piece about motivation. And so um, it's very, very important uh, getting through this stroke. Motivation to me is the number one oh, issue. Wow. Isn't, that, Isn't interesting? that interesting? Yeah. You know, some people yeah, say, oh, give, give me the techniques. The techniques. And, then and then another person will say, say, well, well I, need I need the motivation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, you know, I was motivated for about six months and then when I wasn't going to therapy I kind of lost for several months lost my um, desire and um, and it, it, it and I seemed like I that's how I stopped I wasn't making any progress uh, when I was really uh, encouraged. And so, um, yeah, you, I think you have to have a dream. And you have to, you have to, that dream has to be greater than your problems. Yeah. And um, and I'm hearing from you. You you are using the whole um, the whole strategy. Finding those strategies that you need, but they also, they have to go, they have to go somewhere, you know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so where are you going? Where are you going? Well, I'm, um, <laughs> I was going to use the, the word, my homework. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, I, I was sitting down to use my homework, but now that you're t saying that, I'm going to I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to do my, my fun time. <laughs> I'm not going to do my homework. I'm going to do my fun time. So what is so your, what fun, is your time? fun time? Well, um, I have a lot of, I have a lot of things that I'm interested in. Um, uh, I, I love, I did love to, to read. And so um, I've missed now for almost two years. I've missed 
uh, reading. And so I was, I went online um, a couple, about a month ago and I found, let me get this. And I'm sure you know about this. Sure, this, sure. This is the Library of uh -huh. Congress. Free books um, for those who can't read are blind. And so uh, I, uh, my wife helped me and I went online and went through all of the process, pro the processor. And now I get free, great books and uh they they also give you this um this re this recorder and so i have really interested i mean the last three weeks i've been really loving books online because now they're they're giving um uh, and, and now i found uh, uh i found also a um a, mm, let me show you this. It's an app, yes, an app, and it's called um, um, Bard, Bard, B A R D, Bard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this Bard is the same thing, it's the government books that I can download. Great, great. My, now, my here's phone. my question here's my for question. you, okay? Yes. Okay. That's a, That's perfect, a perfect goal. goal. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you're going to be enjoying those books. Those books. Yes. Now, the, now next the next question, question is, is can, you can you talk with talk anybody, with anybody about, about those books? Those books? So that so then, then you can use you, your, your speaking, speaking skills, skills to, relate to relate with to somebody, to somebody else, else about, about the books, books that, that, you're, that reading. you're reading. Yes, yes. Um, my therapist right now, my therapist is not using books, but she, she one of the things that she's having fun <laughs> Um, I'm watching TED Talks about 10 minute 10 talks and I, I, I listen and then I shut it down and then I, I write as much as I can remember and then when I go to therapy she um she she looks the, the the my arrangement my arrangement is wrong uh, sometimes i have the, the adverb or the verb so she looks at your at your at written expression yes and then and she so takes a look at the look grammar, at the grammar. Yes, and we talk about it, and we great, great. find that where they're supposed to be, <laughs> you know. And great, um, great. she's really doing some pretty um, maybe out of the box stuff. Yep, yep, good. Me good. because my purpose, my big purpose, is to get back to my work. Okay, good. I, I got to stop you here. Stop you here. So, so thank you, thank for, your you for your contribution. We're getting, We're getting all, getting kinds, all of kinds of hearts and thumbs up, up on, on what you're what saying, you're and people and are people really are benefiting, benefiting from, from how you're going you're about, going about um, improving, improving your speech, speech and your language. Your language. Yes. yes. So we'll see so you I'll next see week, you next hopefully. Week. I really appreciate you, and I, I wait every Tuesday for this, good, <laughs> this great show. Thank you. All right. All thanks. Right, thanks. Bye. Okay, let's see who's on the call now. Let's see Joe. 
Joe's one of those guys who was able to put in over eight hours a week, 10 hours a week plus into his therapy. And Joe Bourne is one of the people who, who I can honestly say had the characteristics that are necessary <clears throat> to achieve. There he is. Hey, Joe. Yeah. What do you got there? <laughs> uh, to, to plug back in, right? Yeah. yeah. To plug the brain back into the tongue, right? <laughs> okay, how are you? I am fine. Um, I go to speed for me two days a week. Um, Lamar. At Lamar. Mm hmm. Yeah. I went to Lamar um, before. They didn't been having to get her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am uh, I am proud of being and the more um Doctor Damien is my doctor for speech therapy. You sound great. Are you sure in loud? Yes. We are, we are going to be in Las Vegas probably until about March. Oh. Uh, you won't you won't come come comedy comedy Wait, no. say that again. You won't some comedy. Do I want some? You want me to go up there? Yeah, some comedy. That that would definitely be some comedy. Yes, <laughs> that would definitely be some comedy. No. Um. I go to Las Vegas. You go to Las Vegas? And, yeah. Uh, same time as you. Are you coming this year? Yes. When? Um. Now. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you're right in Las Vegas now, then. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to actually come to Las Vegas? Uh, I thought about it. All right. All right. Well, it's great speaking with you, Joe. And uh, 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 would you agree that it takes at least about eight hours a week Yes. To improve speaking? Yes. Uh, it is a lifetime commitment. It's a lifetime commitment. Man, you sound really good. You sound terrific. Okay, Joe. Well, it's been nice speaking with you. And 
Adrian Lepre Ellis is even on the call, and Carl oh. is on the call. You remember a Adriana uh, Lepre, right? The physical therapist from Deer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Joe. Well, thanks for being on the call today. It's always nice speaking with you. And come to Vegas. Bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, good. Well, so we have a time for about one or two more people. If you have a question or you have a comment, there's a green button somewhere on your screen that if you'd like to be on the call and if you'd like to... We'd love to be able to speak with you and... Uh, uh, if you have a question or if you'd like me to show you something or anything like that, we're here to help you and to help you learn about stimulating speech and language. And many of you know that I have a website and that um, I have an independent study course for people who want to learn the teaching of talking and a book. And uh, I also have one-on-one -on -one and small groups. So if anybody is interested in that, you know, you can get with me or you can go to teachingoftalking.com. And uh, there's Ed Mahan is on the call and, and he's uh, speaking with Russell and Kathy Ladd. Damri is watching and Charade and her computer froze. Oh, my goodness. So I'm, I'm going to leave it open. Um, uh, to see if we can get one more person um, on the call. I think this has been a very, very good call this, this, today. In, in reviewing, um, I, I'm challenging each and every one of you to, to engage in, a, in at least about eight hours of speech and language stimulation each week. And uh, I'm going to challenge you also to... Um, uh, not to procrastinate, find a way to have fun. If you're not having fun in speech therapy, maybe um, talk to your therapist about it or seek another opinion. Or um, There are always a number of different ways to, to deal with that. So um, on that, since I don't see anybody else on the call, uh, it's, it, Helen says, I can see pretty pixels. The information has been great today. Well, I'm, I'm glad of that, Helen. And, and I'm glad that, um, many of you have, are, are benefiting from it. Take the first step, as Gretzky would say, take the shot. So if you see an opportunity, if you see an opportunity, uh, with your speech or with speech therapy or learning something new, as, as Gretzky would always say, take the shot. This is Mark Idleman, speech language pathologist. I'm going to sign off now. We're going to be back next week, and we're going to have another. I'm going to try and find something very, very interesting uh, uh, for you to uh, learn. And I thank you for being on the call, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.